Thank you. Good, good evening, everybody. Mm, whoops. Uh, good evening. Hey, Kit Kat. Good evening, everybody. So the reason why I'm a little bit late here, uh, I was on Friends with Furries Live. She had been taken off planet again. This is, I think, number 17. So we're live here. We'll be here till 1 a.m. So we're going to do uh, a show here till 1 a.m. And then we'll be on at 11 o'clock tomorrow night with our regular show. But uh, I know I was guided. I was on her live when she was on earlier um, before she was taken. And then I had this feeling she would be taken, but I wasn't there when it happened. Uh, but I knew she was going to be taken to uh, on the ship. So, uh, hey, Katie, good to see everybody here. We were on this morning. I have one more show to load up on my YouTube channel, Ashtar Command Spaceship News. I have loaded up a few shows already that I were backtracked on. Good to see everybody here. So tonight we'll go till 1 a.m. Maybe a little bit, you know, after that. But uh, I was just on watching April Live and she's exhausted. She was just uh, uh, earlier tonight. She was taken on the ship of the Ashtar Command of our, our family. Uh, and uh, so uh, we were just there for support. When she came back on live, I went in there. I said, I have to stay here. I was guided to stay here and uh, help support uh, what she was doing outside. And she was trying to show the ships. There were like 18 ships. She said tonight, 18 ships surrounding her property. And again, um, the government and some reptilians were trying to infiltrate her property. And the Ashtar Command actually knows where they were. The reptilians were, I think, underground somewhere. But they uh, have been found, and uh, the Ashtar Command is going to take care of it. She is well protected, and uh, they, they were trying to infiltrate uh, her. Uh, they didn't succeed again. They tried to do something that they, the command is right on the money, right on top of it, and uh, she's well protected. So that's the latest information. Um, we'll have, I know there's a message that they gave her when she was on the ship and we'll see what parts of the message can be given to everybody on the planet. Uh, I think that's, uh, I'll be, uh, messaging her. I know she's going back to work tomorrow, uh, but we'll try to message her and see uh, what public message they can give us, uh, that we can share with you on the show here. So things are getting pretty intense, you know, like I said before, uh, and I said on my radio show this morning, you know, the government is somewhat aware of what we're all doing. Uh, they, <laughs> they think they're going to stop us, you know, like they're going to stop us. Uh, the reptilians are going to have problems and the government people working with them are going to have even more problems. And that's the Ashtar command. The Astro Command is going to, you know, kick blank. And they are going to round these people up. And they are. Like I said, whatever they try to do to stop disclosure, these reptilians and government people, uh, they're not going to be able to do it. They ought to, they just ought to give up while they're ahead, you know. They ought to just give up. <laughs> because we, within the Astro Command, those are those who came here to Earth fully conscious. They can't affect us. They're afraid of us. Hey, uh, friend of Maiden, good to see you. Greetings. So I was on April's Live. She had just gotten back from being on the ship. And uh, I kind of knew, I had a feeling today that, you know, I told her, I think the other night, I think you're going on back to ship again. Drummer Jones, welcome. So we're all like in sync. Like I'm always tuned in on a level. Hey, Lindsay, good to see you. I'm always tuned in on a certain specific frequency where I know things. And I'll say, okay, April, you're going to, I got a feeling you're going on the ship again. And for a reason, you know, uh, Angie, good to see you. Michelle, good to see you. 
Uh, I watched her live video. I was watching it quietly earlier. Hey, River Blue, Linda. And I knew as soon as I was watching it, you know, that she had the, the sp certain kind of lighting. I wasn't able to turn the audio up. It was, I was doing, hey, Cliff, good to see you. But I knew, I said, you know what? I know she's going to be taken on the ship tonight. You know, yeah, she's going to get some rest. But I knew she was going to go on the ship. I just knew it. And I wasn't there to stay on there. But it probably happened minutes or, or maybe 10 or 15 minutes after I left the show, her broadcast, that she was uh, actually on the ship. And she said tonight, uh, before I left her, her broadcast, that there's a message. So when she's fully awake and she's able to think clearly, she'll probably have a message to share. We're going to bring her on the show to share that message. You know, as soon as she's able to rest and everything. Um, and anything that we're getting from our space family is coming direct. It's not channeled. She's coming back from being on the Ashtar ships with real information. So understand this. Uh, hey, Xena, good to see you, Sherry. Sonia, thank you. Gina, Storm, welcome. Uh, we were on this morning on our radio show, uh, The Cosmic Eye. We had a lot of people watching the show from uh, TikTok, and we appreciate that. Stargazer, good to see you. Good to see you. And I was just on listening to her. My father, Rubar, <laughs> wants me to be patient, and I will. Rubar, and the, Rubar, they watch me. They know that I'm, I can, thank you so much. They know that I'm impatient because I really want, I'm not so much impatient because I want to go on the ship. I guess I'm impatient. Hey, it's Jail Bell, thank you. Because I want to start doing the mission work. You know, I want to start doing whatever I have to do now. You know, I don't want to wait, but I, I at, at the same token, I know there's a plan in, in place here. So when all five of us go together, I know there's a plan in place. But I so want to help now. I mean, I guess I'm doing the best I can. I'm helping by doing what I'm doing here with this program on a lot of levels and with sending the spaceships where people need help and the space beings where people need help. I thank God that I have that ability. Thank you. But there's so much more I want to do. I guess I have to just wait till it's time and then I'll be activated when I go on the ship on those other things and I can help people. We'll all be able to do that, you know. I just want to help more. That's the only that's the only reason he knows I'm impatient because I really want to to do more. You know, I don't feel I'm doing enough. I mean, I guess I am, but I don't feel I'm doing enough. You know, I wish I could do more. But it's good to see all of you because we're in a, a period of time that's really switching. And if you've been following the journey for the since last year and we're just starting this year and you're following the journey, what's going on here, this is the real deal, folks. This is what's going on, you know. We don't have to talk about whether a government agency knows about UFOs or whether they're interested in disclosure. This is disclosure. What's happening right now, what we're talking about, what's when April's live and she's going on the ships of the Ashtar Command with her parents and bringing back information. It's real. It's happening now. The government doesn't want this kind of thing to happen. The government would rather see nothing happen. But this is out of their control, you see. This is the thing you got to know. The government agents that are working with the reptilians, they don't realize that this is out of their control, that we're not afraid of them. They don't scare us. They're scared of us. That's why they have to try to interfere, because they want to try to interfere to prevent all this stuff from happening. They're not going to prevent us from getting together. They're not going to prevent us from coming together. And they won't. I guarantee it. I won't let it happen. Ever. You know, ever. You know, I got the backs of everybody that's here to help the planet. I got your backs. This show has your backs. If you're having visitations with space people, I got your back. If you have a story to tell about something really important happening with the spaceships, I've got your back. This show is here for a reason. Unlike any other, I know now I'm here for a reason to do this. I'm bridging the gap and bringing people together. 
gained people courage to, to speak their truth, to share their truth. You know? Hey, Area 51, Section 42A, Military Active. Good to see you, brother. So I was really amped up this morning on my show. I let loose. You know, and you'll find out as you get to know me on the show that I speak cosmic truth. I'm a talk show host, yes. I've been spending, I spent many years in radio and some TV. So I know how to be doing what I do. Hey, Karen Morgan, good to see you. You know, things are getting real. They already are real, you know. And uh, I'm sure if I was up in Vermont, uh, and I was right there. Most likely, I would be on the ship when that happens. But there is a uh, a planning and a timing for everything, you know. So I know that. I know there's a, a planning and a timing for everything. Everything will happen in time. You know, for all of us. And it's not easy to live on this planet. Uh, I mean, I was out in my garden today getting the area ready for watermelon growing. And I enjoyed that, getting my hands in the dirt. That's one of the things I like to do besides being here and help people on my show. And I did that today. Hey, Flo, good to see you. Thank you for the hat yard. You know, and this is the thing that they're trying to do. The, the government and the reptilians are trying to infiltrate what we're doing not just here on the show but with april they can't do it you know like uh, april was live tonight the 18 ash truck command ships around her property and they put devices around the property in the mountains and around her property uh, and they're they're going after the reptilians those reptilians they don't learn anything see they don't they don't realize that the ash truck command is going to get them, quarantine them, and send them off planet. They're going to be gone. You know, they're going to be gone. It's not happening. And any government agents that are listening to the show who are supporting reptilians, your time is up. I want you to know this right now. I have no, I have no fear. Let's put it that way. Your time is up. You might monitor or try to monitor what we do here. It makes no difference. Your time is up. We're going to do what we have to do to bust the matrix. And that means your time is up. When we speak about things and we interview people that tell the truth of their experiences, that's disclosure. The government, you're not giving us any disclosure. You're trying to play games with us. You're trying to tell people, oh, submit your reports to the government, you know, we were, we're interested in what you have to say. We want to see your videos. They want to see videos from people in the Air Force and other people within the government and the Pentagon. They're so supportive of their own different uh, departments. They want people out there, the Navy, the Air Force, they want to see videos. They want to see your, your, your documented proof because they're interested on their internal UFO group that's on, on the Internet, right? How much uploaded information has the Pentagon put on that that UFO site? I haven't been on there recently. I haven't checked. But I think there's more truth here on my show than the Pentagon will ever expose on the UFO site. More truth here than what the Pentagon on their UFO site that they came up with a long time ago. Like, oh, wow. You know, they got a UFO site. They released a few black and white videos from Air Force jets monitoring what they call Tic Tacs, which were actually small spaceships or were UFOs or whatever. And they say, oh, we just disclosed you some video. So here it is. Don't believe it. The government's lying. The government doesn't care about disclosure. They don't even want disclosure. If they wanted the truth, they tell the truth. And you hear the commander saying it right now. I said it on my radio show this morning. I'll say it here. Their time is up. Though the ones in high places in government that are working with these great with these uh, Zeta, not the Zeta, but the reptilians, your time is up. You're trying to poison the atmosphere where people are having contact 
or trying to stop it. You can't stop it. You're not going to stop anything. Yeah, all they want is control. Well, the thing is, Papa Smurf, they don't have any control. And then I've been on here. They have no control here either. This show is well protected. Before I go on the air, people might realize this. I asked the command to protect everybody in, that's viewing the show. I asked the command to protect my area. And I put a bubble of protection around my area. And I know I have the ships protecting me. I have four Astro commanders here in my house. I know Johnny does too. I know Chesno does. And I know Kit Kat does. And we're protected. They won't let anything happen to us. You know, I will not be touched by any of those people. I will not allow it. I'm empowered in my light. In that Christ consciousness. Uh, Carmen, uh, Ashtar Command Carmen is, it's not Astro, it's Ashtar, A-S-H-T-A-R. Ashtar Command is uh, the space people. They are the highest level of light. It's like having a United Nations, Carmen, but this is like a galactic United Nations of planetary worlds of peace. They are human, uh, so, and so you get a little bit of background. They are human like us, taller than us, and men and women, they have families on their own planets. They don't live the way we live. They're vegetarians for the most part. So just to give some background, it's Ashtar, A-S-H-T-A-R, Command Carmen. Just to give you a brief background. Yeah, at least you're right. 30 deals have been made, and it's going to take a minute to make things right. <laughs> and like I said, we're protected. And if you're just learning here and you don't know anything about this, welcome to the show. Uh, eventually, when major contact happens, Carmen, you will meet them. Uh, you will eventually meet them, uh, which we call the star people. They are men and women. They're not gods and goddesses. They are people like us. They're just more advanced. Uh, they've lived, uh, they live to be hundreds of thousands of years old, and they look to be 20 or 30. And we will eventually meet them. Well, contact, as we said, originally was going to be 2027. The timeline has been shifted, and it probably will shift again. But right now, between 2025 and 2026, is the potential for uh, major contact in that, that area of time period. Heather and Son has a story. Let's see, Heather and Son. I have never seen you before. I'm curious if my visitors are that kind. Heather and Son, we're going to bring you up here, and you'll be our first guest on Encounters. This is the number one spiritual UFO talk show. I'm not live. And uh, again, my screen just went doing its thing again. Here we go. I can't bring the light up here, I don't think, or can I? Anyway, uh, Heather, welcome to the show. Are you there? Hold on. Can you Hi, hear Heather. me? I can hear you. Welcome. Hi. I would use my camera, but I'm kind of busy doing something. I look a little crazy right now. <laughs> I have a, a mask on okay. my face and I'm dyeing my hair. So oh, I would. That, I that's wouldn't... quite all right. We don't have to do the camera. <laughs> but I have to do the camera. My lighting went down a little bit here, but that's all right. But go ahead. So I'm going to try to articulate my story the best that I can. I'm not very good at public speaking and I get a little nervous, but I will do my best to articulate what happened to me. Um, to give you a little backstory, I was raised in a rural town in Arizona. And ever since I was a child, um, I would see UFOs. We mm -hmm. used to sit out in our backyard at night and we would watch UFOs and it was just, I was raised knowing that UFOs were real and, you know, there was no denying it in what we saw growing up. Um, I do remember a couple instances as a child where I did have visitors and I, of course, was a child and was told it was my imagination. I don't remember much from those visitations now as an adult, um, just because memory <laughs> and everything of that sort. But this past year, I had the most realistic experience of my life. I would say mm. that this experience was more real than reality is right now mm. for me. Um, 
So basically, I fell asleep. I do, I get sleep paralysis every now and then, where okay. my body freezes and I can see and hear things around me, but I can't move. Mm. And this had happened to me earlier in the night, and I had fallen back to sleep, and I felt like I dove through space and time. It was just like this feeling of just like my body shaking, and um, it, I felt like I was transported and. When I woke up, I was standing in a ship with this woman, and I don't know if this is similar to um, the visitors you've been describing, um, but this woman, I, I came to find out that there's a race called the Palladians that's yeah. very similar yeah. to the looks of this woman being, I don't even know if it has a gender or sex, I am not sure, okay. um, but this was about a seven foot tall um being she had glass blonde hair down mm. to down to her um hips about and she mm -hmm. had these big blue eyes very humanoid looking complete human features other than having larger eyes and a smaller nose um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything else was humanoid looking about her her hands were human everything was human. And so I was transported to the ship and we were in the middle of an ocean. It looked like from my understanding, it looked like an ocean. I live mm -hmm. near the beach. I live in Huntington beach. I live about a mile away from the beach. So okay. to think this could happen, it's <laughs> pretty realistic. Yeah. Um, and so I was transported to what I believe was an aircraft. And the only reason that I can think that it was an aircraft is because it had like this steel lin linoleum kind of floor is mm. what I can explain it as. Okay. And it was completely transparent, the ship all around, like you could see up and you could see down like kind of through the floors, but you could see it all around like 360. And yeah. I couldn't really speak, but I was communicating with her in my head and I was mm. asking her, you know, I, I felt like I was in somewhat of a trance and I was like, are we safe? Are we safe? And that's what I just kept yeah. asking her. And it wasn't like she was speaking back in my language, but I was like feeling comfort whenever yeah. I was asking that. And it was like, I was feeling emotion instead of and it was like, I was, I was being calmed by her. Like it was like a weird transmitting of like feelings where i was like like a, like a telepathy like a telepathy they're mostly yeah telepathic yeah and that's how it felt and mind you i've never done much research on you know aliens i've had some you know concern for ufos and things of that sort and i've watched like mm -hmm. rogan and stuff like that with um yeah. different guests but never I, I was never like an avid person before this experience last year and Anyways, I, I believe I was probably there for a couple of hours, but um, it really felt like just minutes um, that had gone by and I ended up returning to my bed at some point. I don't know when, mm -hmm. but I woke up in the frozen state that I was in and mm -hmm. it was like no time had gone by and I looked at my clock and it was one minute had gone by because I had a clock one on minute. my nightstand and one minute had gone by and I had that whole experience. So, understand. So a minute in earth time is a minute in earth time. When you were taken on the ship of the Palladian ship, there's no time in space. So what was a few hours was a few hours, but it's, but in your time, it's only a minute. And I know for some people, they can't understand this whole thing with a, a person being taken off planet for an hour or a minute or five minutes on Earth time. But understand, in space, there is no time. The, where the Palladians are, there is no time. So when you went on their ship with her, you were on there for probably a couple hours. And oh, you, sometimes you can be on the ship going somewhere for a whole month. But then on Earth time, it could be 10 minutes. But go ahead. Yeah, so it, it was the most real experience of my life. Um, you know, I'm not crazy. I'm not diagnosed with any mental disorder. So, no, I know you're I, you know, it was the most real experience of my life. Right. And I, since then, I used to suffer from a pretty bad anxiety disorder. And mm -hmm. it's after that experience, it almost totally diminished. And 
different things in my life started happening and it's like I just felt like I was healed by whoever this was in a yeah. lot of different you mean ways. The, you mean the woman? Yes, the woman being whatever it was. I'm not sure right, if that had sex. But as far as we know, women on this planet, she looked like a woman. <laughs> so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was just the most intense experience in my life. And I have no idea. I don't know if anybody else has anything similar. I did try to like look up the kind of alien and I stumbled upon Palladian because I was trying to figure out who the heck this was because I never have like. And the thing mm -hmm. is, that's so crazy is I have never looked into like specific alien races before. And yeah. the well, there, you know, simply there aren't any real aliens. That's more of an Earth-based technology. A Palladian would not want to be called an alien. Like I wouldn't want to be called an alien. Um, they, you should probably, if you have contact with her again, they're basically just Palladian uh, beings, uh, space people. Uh, Palladians are human beings. They have a very spiritual essence. They work in a very high frequency of love, and uh, they're just, uh, I would say, just call them Palladians good yeah i just i i but the the purpose of that of saying that is that i've never looked into anything no, known no. like that you know so i had no, no reference no. i had no. no reference to imagine this or dream this in my mind and yeah. then be able to go online and look up her characteristics and then stumble upon right. palladian. yeah you well, know what i mean stumbled upon palladian is no no coincidence and basically, another way of looking at since this is all new to you in terms of what you're looking at, they're basically, as one person said in the room, uh, they're star people, star beings. Right. So it was just crazy to me that I yeah. had no reference of knowing what mm -hmm. this race of star people was. And then mm -hmm. I was able to find almost, you know, the same encounters that other people have had with this race of star people before so i thought that was crazy um it's not you yeah. know what the thing is everyone when they tell me a story they think it's crazy that people are going to believe it but i can tell you 30 years later from 30 years ago a lot of people on earth believe that there are people from other planets that exist so you're much more in the in the majority now and the fact that this shows here and i'm a professional broadcaster i've been doing radio and tv since the 70s and uh i'm a contactee I had contact with space people when I was a kid that were in a flying saucer, men, women, and children in light blue outfits, very beautiful, looking at me in my brother's window, out there's his window, I opened up his blinds and saw the space people, and they were telepathic, and they said, you're not from Earth, you're with us, and we send you our, they just had an immense amount of love coming from them, and they were, That's like, you know, said to me. That's what she said to me. I was on the ship she was like you're one of us that's one of the things she said to me what did she say to you she said that you she told me that i was one of them she was like you're one of us that was what now, do you understand what that means when she says you're one of us she didn't even say it it was like a feeling that i got that i was like with family like it was like right. it was like crazy <laughs> you want to know you want to know what that means what i, I can tell you even though you have a biological family on earth and you have a mother, a father, you have maybe children, you might have grandparents on earth that are biological to this earth, you have a cosmic biological family off planet. Now for human beings, they say, well, how could that be possible? Because you're not from here. You are here. And I'll use the definition of a star seed, meaning you came from where they are and chose to be in this human life experiencing earth life and that's what you've been experiencing they know or found the time this woman from the palladians uh, that you're connected with they made the contact with you because you are connected with them and you probably are connected on a family level to the palladians that you have probably family members off planet that are star people that you're going to meet now, you met her last year, um, but you can reconnect with her through meditation. I'll definitely look into that. I've always been kind of scared of that because I am like a more sensitive person when it comes yes. to these types of things. And yes. I do know that I hold some power in that and I am kind of scared yes. of what I'll see. You don't know, be, so don't, I, don't be don't be afraid. This is the thing. Your mind might your mind your brain might interfere with what's going on here. Your heart will never 
guide you in the wrong way. When I say your heart, I'm not talking about your physical heartbeat. I'm talking about your spiritual heart within you. Your spiritual higher self will never misguide you anywhere. Your brain will try to interfere and say, no, don't do that. You know, oh, that, don't do that. But do it. Go for it. Jump over the mountain. Do it. Don't be afraid of doing it. The reason why you were contacted by this woman, because you're, when she says, and she didn't even have to say it, you felt that they were, she was saying to you in so many ways and feeling, you're part of our family. So you have a connection with them. Don't disconnect that connection. Embrace it. Breathe, you know, you know, breathe it in, breathe it out. Embrace it. Don't be afraid of it. It's going to be a beautiful journey. Don't be afraid of it. They're just waiting. She's just waiting for you to reconnect with her since last year. She's waiting for you now to make the, the next move. But you have to do it at your own pace. But I'm getting, as I read your story, you need to reconnect with her. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't go a day without thinking about her yeah, and, right. you know, thinking about what it possibly could have been. Like, it's just that yeah. feeling. I have never felt that much bliss and that much just like overwhelmingly happy feeling that ever in my life and i really yes. feel like she healed like yes. she healed a part of my heart that was broken and yes just, she I, loves you. I, I can't explain to you how how real it was and i hope for everyone to feel something like that in their lifetime and it, it's more it felt more than doing any illicit substance that i've ever done before and i've never done anything crazy you know what i mean just like yeah, the, no, I understand that. the thing that is legal in california you know like any n right. nothing higher i have never felt anything higher in my life right. than the feeling it was just like this like insane moment and it just felt like it went on forever and then just one minute passed. And, you know, the way that I know, the way that I can really tell that I was actually there is because I, it, it's like, you know, you know, when you're asleep, you know, you're asleep and then you wake up and then right. it's just nothing, you know? And when I was there, it felt like just me and you talking right now. Right, you know? that's right. And there's no dream that feels like that. And somebody could say I'm lucid dreaming. Somebody could say, you know, whatever else, but I have lucid dreamed before and it has it. You can mm -hmm. still tell that you're in a dream and you're dreaming. This did well, not you were, you were you were not dreaming. You actually uh, there's two things that go on here. I've taught people there are things called the cosmic dream and then there's things called the just a dream. Like if there's just a dream, like a bunch of chairs uh hitting a, a bunch of marshmallows or you know a candy cane stick floating uh and uh going uh you know going in into a marshmallow or something kind of really kind of funny ridiculous that would be a regular dream when you have a if you have a dream and this wasn't a dream anyway but that one minute where you were taken off planet for a minute earth time that was a few hours you remember every single detail that you're sharing right now that's not a dream you're going to remember that thing. And that was from last year. If it was just a regular dream, you would not remember it in like a day or two. That what you had an experience of was being uh, taken on board a Palladian spaceship with this woman. And you are connected with the Palladians. And there's some connection with you and this woman. And probably you have family members that are Palladian as well. That if you reconnect with her, she's just waiting for you to make that connection. And the thing is, is like, I could feel my fingertips. I could feel my toes. She mm -hmm. brushed her hand against my skin and I could feel like this cold touch from her hand. Like I could feel mm -hmm. the coldness coming off of her skin. Right. So it's like, I could feel it's, and it's not like a dream. Cause you know, in dreams you can, it, you don't really feel like it's just you more like, like a, no, you don't. But that was like the point of reference because I kept saying, is this real? Is this real? Right. And that's when she rubbed her hand on my face. Right. That's when she felt the coldness from her hand. That's right. So that's, that's the right. point of reference that I think about every single day is that hand touching my skin. And she and did that. And the reason she touched you with her hand, just to let you know, not only is she real, but you're part of her family and she loves you. Yes, she that's you. exactly when. That's exactly when I got that feeling is when we connected like that, when we connected yeah. like skin to skin. So that's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. You can put those two together. You definitely know what you're talking about. So. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I listen to stories. I read stories. I'm very good at what I do. And, uh, 
you know, I I blessed the Ashtar command when they sent me the earth that now I'm fully activated to be able to do what I'm doing here on here. And uh, I read and I know exactly that I, you know, this is the, the most important thing is right now, as you tell the story, uh, I'm getting information from her. I don't know who, what her name is, but um, she wants you to contact her. She wants you to reconnect with her. You have more to do. You have you actually, um, what I'm getting for you is you have mission work to do. Do you realize that? Yeah, I definitely need to look into it and I definitely yeah. need to um, do something here. I mean, I work in dog rescue and that's, I feel mm -hmm. my main purpose on earth is to mm. rescue animals. And like you were saying with the other alien species, like they're mostly vegetarian. I've been vegan since I was 10 years old by choice. Mm -hmm. I just decided one day I would never hurt an animal. And I came to find when I was researching Palladians that they're all vegan as well and that they mm -hmm love animals and that's one of their main mm. purposes as well is animals so yes. that's incredible that that connection was made so i yes i'm just i'm very excited and thank you for talking with me i don't want to take up all of your time because oh, you have, you very have, important work. Time. You have a lot enjoying. of important work to do here but i'll keep you posted if anything else happens in the future i'll definitely follow well, you here's what i want you, here, before you go anywhere i want you to do me one promise and this, and this is your cosmic homework. I want you, whether it's tonight or tomorrow or Friday or whatever day it is, do a 30 minute meditation and remember what she looks like and say, I'm ready to make contact and go back on the ship to do my mission work. I'm ready to get more information of what you want me to do and what I need to do. And if you telepathically send that message through your consciousness, uh, you can also ask her, what is her name? Because I don't know if you got her name when you were on the ship, but you can ask her, what is her name as a Palladian? What is her name? And you want to get to build a relationship and say, I realize I'm connected with you and I'm part of this family. Um, can you, can I come back on the ship? And I want to now proceed to know my mission, whatever that is. Uh, can you do that? Absolutely. And that's great. That's great homework. I definitely didn't know where to start. So that is a great mm -hmm. place. That is a great recommendation of where okay. to start. And I will keep you posted if anything comes from it, but thank you for believing me and thank you for hearing this. This is like the second time I've ever told the story because I don't want to feel, you know, like I'm crazy for telling You're people. You're not crazy. I so I need them. you to do one other thing. Stop saying, I think I'm crazy. Throw it out the window. You're not crazy, okay? Thank you. <laughs> and I believe you so as say, well. Say it right now. Say to yourself right now, Heather. I am not crazy. I want to hear it. I am not crazy. Say it again. I am not crazy. I am not crazy. I am a cosmic being of light. I am a cosmic being of light. Say it one more time. I am a cosmic being of light. I am a cosmic being of light. And I'm not crazy. And I'm not crazy. <laughs> there you go. That's all you got to do, right? Thank you so much. I, def I definitely just got the chills. That was awesome. So thank you so much. I don't, what's your name? My name is Commander Alion. I'm from Mars originally. I came here to Earth when I was a kid. And I'm also with the Ashtar Command. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not, but I'm, I look forward to finding out about it. Well, I'll just give you while you're on here, I'll briefly tell you. The Ashtar Command are the positive star people throughout the, the Christ of beings of light from many different spiritual planetary worlds. So I got activated when I was a kid, but I didn't know what the Ashtar Command was. I was like any other kid. I went to school. I went to, I graduated my college years. I did all the stuff human people do, but I've also had many spaceship sightings since I was a kid in the sixties, but I am fully activated now. I'll be more activated soon. Um, but yes, yeah, so I don't come from Earth, although I live here. Where I come from is Mars, a planet that has 10 to 15 million inhabitants living on the planet. So that's just a brief background of who I am. That's incredible. Can we find more on that on YouTube or? Uh, yeah, my YouTube channel is Ashtar Command Spaceship News. Uh, on that channel, you can watch all my past shows here on TikTok. If you've missed any of them, that's you'll awesome. get to watch previous shows. Mod, maybe have the mod mod um post that maybe have them yeah. pin that so people can yeah. look that up oh you know and uh i'm following you now so 
awesome. you know, I want to keep up. I want to keep you. I want to keep updated on what your progress is on your contact with the Palladium. Order. Yeah, I've just been honestly kind of scared of you know even admitting to what happened because it was just yeah. such a intense experience, you know. Oh, but yeah. I think I'm finally Absolutely. becoming more comfortable and ready to talk about Good. it because Good. I think and it's don't be, And don't be scared anymore. There's no need to be scared. Don't be scared anymore. Okay. Take the word scared out of your vocabulary. The scared word comes from the mental process of the mind. Don't be scared anymore. All right? Well, it's a very intense experience. It is intense. It's a know. real, it's intense because the human condition is, your mind is, is programmed in a human condition. And it's, when this happens, it shatters your brain because now the brain had control of things. Now the brain can't kind of figure this all out. So it's scary. But again, you're coming to terms with it. Don't be scared. Promise me that. I promise you that. Well, thank okay. you so much for all of your advice and for listening. And again, thank you for the platform of telling my little story and again, for believing me. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Heather, you've been a great guest uh, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your contact with the Palladian woman. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. All right. Everybody, Heather, my first guest. What a great guest she was. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. What a story, you know? And this is what's happening, folks. People are going to start having contact around the world. They already are. Like Heather. The Palladians and other light people, beings, are going to make contact with their connections on Earth. You know, you might be the next one. You might say, well, I just had a contact with a man and a woman from the planet so-and-so. They said, I had a mission or that I have something I'm supposed to do. Start realizing that these things are going to happen and increase, that these things are going to happen to a lot of people. Drummer Jones, how can I make contact? Can you give me some advice? Drummer Jones, the first thing you need to do is uh, do meditation. Do like a 30-minute-a-day meditation. Uh, I would say, Drummer Jones, not only that, use higher dimensional or what I call space music. And this goes for anybody. Thank you. Thank you, River. Uh, use like space music or ambient space music. And when you meditate, use the word you or ohm. Those are very powerful words. The word you or ohm. And when you do that, say, I am a Christed being of light. And I wish to connect with my star family. And I only will allow my star family to connect with me. So you have to set a barometer uh, protection around you when you're doing this. You don't want just any cosmic joker coming into your consciousness. So that would be the most important thing to do is higher vibrational music. Oh, AZ Desert Rider, you play higher vibrational music Wednesday nights. I'll have to check you out, brother. But do that. You know, use uh, I, on YouTube, there's Christ consciousness music, ambient music, which is a high level frequency. Uh, but definitely do about a 30 minute a day or a night meditation and stay focused on what I'm talking about and use this very specific terminology that I'm talking about in terms of uh, putting your consciousness out there. You know, so yeah. And you're watching Encounters, everybody. Uh, I was on earlier with April's Live. I felt I needed to be there uh, and watch what was happening. And um, yeah. Definitely try it. And Trevor Jones, let me know. I'm going to follow you. Let me know how things go, man. Uh, actually, I am following you. So uh, let me know what happens. You know, take your time with it. It's not like you have to rush through it. Everything takes time. But uh, if you follow the, the things I'm saying, eventually you will, uh, you'll have inter intergalactic or telepathic communications. Uh, thank you, friend Maiden. Thank you so much. You know, and um, we're going to bring April up tomorrow night or I don't know if she's on or not, but uh, we'll bring her up. I know she has. I was on the live watching what was happening with the ships and uh, she had 18 spaceships in the skies protecting. And also um, Schizo says, how do the space people reproduce just like us? The men and women from other planets have children just like us. Um, 
the aging process is very different than on Earth, and our our face families live to be thousands upon thousands of years old, and they look like to be twenty or thirty. Yeah, so yeah, don't channel anything. You know, uh, that's the one thing I've saw, seen too much on TikTok, on actually Facebook, is you know people channeling. So don't channel anything. Just uh, stay away from that. Oh, Car, I know who Karen is. Karen, we're gonna bring Karen up here. Karen's been waiting. Hey, Karen Morgan, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Commander? We're doing good. Things are happening. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. I've got um, a couple of things that I, it was this last week, I encountered a, I thought it was the moon behind some clouds. It was like, you know, a circle. And then mm -hmm. it was real fuzzy on the outside. And just as I was looking at it, I just looked like this and it darted and when I dart when it darted the moon was over there by it right and so I was trying to get pulled over so I could get a picture of it 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 was just a round circle and it made several little short darts you know wow. around but I couldn't get uh it was about six miles from my house and I couldn't get pulled over quick enough to get it but yeah. three and I don't know, it was round and it was kind of hazy or about it. Yeah. You know, it, it was kind of hazy. That's all I can tell you about it, but definitely was a ship of yeah, some ship, sort. Of because, yeah, yeah you, I mean, I could, I just went, wow, <laughs> it's just right there. And it was like it was, you know, not too far away. From and just like, in, and, and let people know around the world what what part of the what part of the country were we saw the ship? What state? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So you saw the ship in Oklahoma. And when was this? When did you see this? Last week. Last week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, and, big was, how big was the huh? ship? Do you know? How do I know it was? No, no. How big was the ship? I mean, it was, was, it, was, it, was it was it was large. It, it was, was large. large. It appeared to be really large. Um, of course, I couldn't really tell how far it was away, but it felt like it was close. You know? Yeah. I don't, I can't explain that. But about oh four years ago, I was the, we were having a storm. And we just had tornadoes here tonight, so we're glad uh, to be here. <laughs> but, I'm glad you're uh, here. Yeah, uh, I went and I was going to take pictures of the storm coming up, and I was sitting in the parking lot of a convenience store here in Butler, and mm -hmm. I took pictures real fast, one right after the other, and I, I wasn't moving around or anything. It was just trying to catch, you know, the lightning storm. I love them. And after I got home, I was checking my pictures, and there's an object that comes into the pictures uh, from my right going to the left. Mm -hmm. And I captured those, those pictures, and then it just started backing up, like going wow. backwards. Yeah. Uh, and I have I have those in the steel shot. I was wondering if if I maybe can throw a couple of them up here. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you have them still, uh, I'm sure everyone would like to see the still shots of the spaceship that you were capturing. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, I'm gonna go. Tr I'm gonna go pull them up now. I may have to show you several so you can see it actually come in. You know, into the screen. Yeah. And then and then backing out, but I didn't see it as long as I was sitting there. Yeah, but you caught and, it on the on the camera. Yes, I did. Oh, thank you. Yes, I did. See the okay, camera. I'm gonna, the I'm camera gonna... never lies. The camera picks up things that we can't normally see. So I, I, I she's gonna show us some photos from last week right. of these spaceships in still shots. You're watching Encounters, uh, the late night edition. We're on April's 
monitoring and watching her live outside her house in Vermont. And we wanted to just give her support and uh, um, I needed to be there. So, and we are here live. Okay. You can see uh, this is where I was sitting. Let me, I'm going to bring you on, uh, on a larger camera. Oh, I don't know if it's going to oh, make okay. a difference. I'll expand it. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. not I, really. I think it will. I really think it will. And like I said, it's a series of shots that I was taking right after one after the another. So I'm mm -hmm. going to pull up the next one so you can see it also. Mm -hmm. Do you and see can you some indication what we're looking at? Is that that white light in the sky? Yes. Ah, I see below the clouds, that white long light. It's what? It's kind of like on the upper part of the right screen, there's a white, right. bright light. Yeah, it is. Okay. And I'm going to show you the next, the next photo now. Yeah, there is again. It's like translucent. Uh, yeah, it is. And it, it, it looks like, um, okay. I'm going to go to the next photo. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it's definitely translucent. It almost looks like, uh, I'm almost going to say this, like it's either translucent or there's something in the front end of it, like a solid object. Right. Uh, it looks, it looks like it's, uh, it looks like it's two parts of it. I'm going to uh, pull up the, see, that's when it's, that right there is when it started backing back out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I will go, and I'm going to pull and enlarge uh, one of the one of the shots. I think that this photo right here uh, actually shows it a, a little clearer than normal. Okay. Uh, and then let's see. And there's. Oh wow! Look at that. That's really good. Uh huh. Can you explain that a little bit? Um, that's a really clear shot. Uh, I can try. I can enlarge that picture. You I can can't it? it. It uh, hmm. it looks like the bottom of a pontoon boat, actually. Mm -hmm. You know where there's two floating areas on yeah. the boat. Mm -hmm. It's got it's kind of pointed. I'm going to take it off and enlarge it now, and I can I can do that to uh, several of them. Yeah. But I'll I'll do that right now so that you can okay. get a better look. And we have Karen Morgan. She's in Oklahoma. These pictures are from last week that she took. No, these, Commander, these pictures are from three years ago. Oh, these are from three years ago. Okay, three right. years ago. Correct. Right. All right. Okay. It'll take me just a moment to... Right. So these are from three years ago, these particular photos. But still very good. She's just switching the photos on her camera. You're watching Encounters, the late night spiritual UFO talk show. I'm your hostess of the mostest, Commander Allion, and welcome. Once you watch this show, you'll be addicted because this is a real show. Unlike any TikTok thing that's going on, we do an actual show. Um, my background's in broadcasting or professional broadcaster and a contactee and Astro commander. And uh, I do all kinds of stuff in the cosmic realm, so to speak. Hey, Greg, uh, I think it's Gre Greggy. Thank you, Greggy. Uh, we appreciate that. And we appreciate everybody out there, new and old uh, viewers. We appreciate all the people finding the show. Uh, you'll be addicted in a good way. You, you know, this addiction is not bad. So this is from three years ago. Look, that's more a close up of the, can you explain that, what we're looking at? Uh, that's uh, that's what I captured, actually. Um, and like I said, it entered the the frame of the camera, and then it b b backed out with the sequences of those mm -hmm. photos. Mm -hmm. Can you can yeah. you tell? I might yeah, can I can even see. Move. I see Karen like the ship is way below the cloud line of the partly clear sky. 
it itself is way lower in the atmosphere than the clouds are from what I can see. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's very bright. When you were looking at it physically with your own eyes, was it really intensely bright? I, I didn't see it as I was well, you taking didn't see the it, pictures. But the, when you looked at the picture after you got the picture. Oh, yeah, it's very bright. Yeah, in the picture, it looks yeah, really bright. Yeah, it's very bright. And uh, you know what it I, was? That actually was a cloaked spaceship. Now, a camera will pick up things that are cloaked where the human eye can't see a cloaked spaceship that's cloaked, your camera has no uh, filter. It'll pick up whatever no. it sees in the sky, and it picked up that ship. The ship was right. actually cloaked. Uh, yeah, I feel like it was. You can see the power line. Oops. You can see the power line mm -hmm. that that is on the other side of the street where I was sitting. Right, the power line is that black line, and then the, the spaceship right. is above the power line in the sky. Right. I'm mm -hmm. pulling, just to enlarge this one uh, again, so. Hmm. Oh, maybe I didn't enlarge it. I don't know. Nope. <laughs> no, I didn't. Hold on. No, I'll, I'll get this in just a second. <laughs> No problem. You're doing all right. You're doing pretty good. And everyone's really tuned into the uh, pictures. Now, if you get taken on board a spaceship during my live, that's never out of the question. Not in this show. Now, just, just watch. Either she comes back or she was taken on a spaceship. Just kidding. But on my show, anything like that is possible. I got a I got a good enlargement on it this time. Okay. Oh, that that's a great picture. Look at that, everybody. Look at that. If you're not watching this show right now, uh, you're missing a lot of stuff, folks. Come on in. Now you can see the detail of that of that ship that was cloaked. And the camera caught it. She couldn't see it. Karen couldn't see it with her own eyes. But the camera doesn't lie. The camera actually picked it right up. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell how iridescent it is. But do you see where it cast a light? There's kind of a line that goes from the very tip, the front tip of it. Mm -hmm. up. You could see like a dark line that goes up. Yeah, that dark line is in it looks between like, the upper light and the bottom. It looks like it's illuminating. Bottom. Yeah, illuminating. What do you think that, that light, that darkness in the middle is? What do you think that is? My head? No, not your head. Okay. <laughs> no, the, 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 the <laughs> darkness in between the light, like the picture. Oh, you yeah. See, uh, you know what I mean? I think it. it I think it's casting like a, a, a light from like below it see mm -hmm. because you can it like a like it would be a shadow that was reflected off the ground yeah i will uh i will grab another picture here yeah oh th yeah this one looks a little different right here Okay, yeah. That's the one where it looks translucent and it looks like there's an object in it or because it's translucent, you're seeing the cloudiness past the translucent uh, light of the spaceship. Hmm. And we have Karen here from Oklahoma. She's showing us photos from three years ago she took. And in the photos were a spaceship very, very, very brilliant light. Hey, Nora Zora. Welcome to the show, everybody. Kelly Must. Everybody out there, good evening, wherever you are. Vivian, thanks for the share. Yala Gall, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, good to have everyone here. 
Ah, yeah. Oh, look oh. at that. See, I love that picture. It's so, you, you really were able to capture the essence of that ship. That was, that's really cool. Right, and I'm fixing to pull up that, the next one that I got of it. Mm -hmm. I thought that I enlarged hey, that one. love, good to see you. Hmm. So you're gonna pull up another photo. For folks just coming in here, we have Karen in Oklahoma showing us still photos she took of a ship that she couldn't see with the human eye. And she took these pictures and there was a spaceship that was cloaked and she got it on camera from three years ago. Are, he, are my wind chimes too loud? No, your wind chimes are perfectly fine. Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> We love wind chimes. I've got them outside my porch. Nora Zora says, "I got some pics of UFOs posted. Some of them." Hey, Nora Zora, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have to have some show and tell of your pictures on the show sometime. Crazy! That I don't know why I can't pull that one up now. Can, mm -hmm. I, can we get the green screen? Dang, it keeps on pulling up the same. Okay, but you can see that line up, yeah. up from the front of it for, in that shot. Well, the power line is below the craft. The craft is in the right. sky. Right, the above. power line is right. Right. I don't know why it's not letting me pull up this last photo that I just enlarged. Hmm. Uh. Let me, let me enlarge this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm taking a screenshot of it and having to go. as we're talking. I like your chimes. They're really nice. Thank you. We're just, we're just chiming along here on Encounters. Okay, that's the one right there that I was actually... Oh, okay. okay, so now... You can see a different picture. dimension of it. Mm -hmm. And now, and now I'm screenshotting it and enlarging. She's just switching photos, so yeah, there we go. Right. Um, yeah, I'm just putting it back up. I mean, that's such a beautiful picture. Just looking at it, you can see the detail of the spaceship uh, uh, in the sky above the power lines across the street from where you were uh, taking photographs. Yes. Uh, okay. Um. I, I'm working on that picture again. No problem. And you're watching the late night show encounters the spiritual ufo talk show normally on at 11 but we were so uh hanging out with april on friends of Prairie's live and there were 18 ships around her property in the mountains up uh, where she is and a lot of uh, protective support uh, for her and the work she's doing And me, I'm drinking some apple cider. Okay. 
Hopefully, I have got it enlarged good enough now. Um, and what Karen's doing is trying to enlarge some of the photos from three years ago, just to give people a background of these spa the spaceship that she photographed that she didn't even know was in the photo. Here's a hill, but that's a good picture. Look at that. And you can see, even though it's translucent, that there is a dark area, slightly darker uh, on in the middle. Uh, and you can you can see it looks like the very tips, the front tips are sol more solid and then there's like a point that comes up in the middle of it from the right side yeah yep it's pretty amazing that's a great photo you can you can see the energy coming from it almost sort of like a plasma ship uh, plasma ship. Okay, I yeah, don't plasma ships are translucent. Most plasma ships I've seen documented are like a yellowish, orangey kind of gold color. They're called plasma ships. Oh yeah, don't need ships. Only low frequency beings use ships. Well, uh, nope. These are plasma ships. Uh, very high frequency. The Astro Command uses spaceships, unlike what we call Earth-based ships or low vibrational craft. The Astro Command has spaceships that are amazingly big, and the insides of these ships have living quarters. They have uh, living ships. They have the living ships where they grow vegetarian food or plants. They live on them. They have working ships where they do the mission work. So uh, the space beings do have ships, people. Uh, it's just they don't, they don't have ships like Earth-based 3D limited type spaceships. Their ships are way different. And some of their ships are translucent. But that, that picture, again, that you've documented is uh, very beautiful, Karen, you know? Uh, I, well, I was, I, I, I know that that's what it was. I, you know, sometimes you, had you any, just know stuff. Have you had and, any contact, like uh, visual, uh, not visual, but ever since you've taken those photos, has anything in three years happened with you? Like, have you had any um, physical visitors? encounters? Yeah, visitors, uh, space people. Uh, no, I haven't. You know, I told you about the, those that I have seen through the yeah. years, and, but I've not had any physical uh, contact mm -hmm. or, okay. or any personal contact. Those, um, and, and given the opportunity, like last week, well, that's the set right here. I didn't even know was in there till I looked at the photos, you know. And but that one last week that I saw, I couldn't get over quick enough to say, "Hey, you know, I'm here. Come talk to me, you know, right. whatever." Right, stick around a while. Let me take some photos. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do, but I I couldn't get it. And it was just the way it, it, it was just darting. Did it, did it feel similar to what you saw in this picture three years ago or something? Or did it feel different? It felt different. Okay. And how did, it, how did it feel to you when you saw it? What feelings were you getting? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty gifted in a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, the feeling that I got was, exhilarating it was mm -hmm. uh calm it was even though it was exhilarating uh i wasn't scared i was excited about seeing it you know and wanting to take the pictures you know mm -hmm. no i i believe that to be true um everyone that i've got everyone that i've ever seen in this uh this included would make five times that I've seen different mm -hmm. ships and it um, I've never been afraid of them. Yeah, there's nothing to be they've, well, you, I, they've always been welcoming and even at one time I was I would say, Oh come get me. <laughs> come get me, you right. know, because we right. we've heard the stories all these years, you know. Right. And so that that's what I would 
I don't think I was jokingly say it because I meant it, you know, but No, I think uh, you're you're connecting with positive space people and I think eventually you're gonna be in a situation where they're gonna take you on the ship and you're gonna get to see them. I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Uh and like I said, given the opportunity, I I come out and I look at the I look at the sky every night. Yeah. And uh this one, of course, was in the daytime. Yeah. And there was two others that were in the daytime. Mm -hmm. And I've and I've I've seen five different ones. And so mm -hmm. the other ones were at night. But the other ones that I was talking about that was the uh three lights that were simultaneously in two and three different groups. There would be yeah. one group, and then they'd bust off, and there'd be three, a triangle of lights in two wow. groups, and it would bust off, and it would be a triangle shape of lights in, like, three groups. Mm -hmm. And I lived on a dairy farm at that time, and the cows that we just taken the babies off of, the mother cows, mm -hmm. will constantly moan and cry for them. But while those were that I was seeing for that three week period, every yeah. night about ten thirty, from ten thirty to eleven is when they would they would show up. Uh, yeah. The cows would just stand in the pasture and just look up at the sky. Yeah. And you know the coyotes wouldn't be hollering. Uh, you know none of the normal night sounds that you hear. It was all just silent. Mm hmm. Amazing, amazing. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, I appreciate your story. I think it's a beautiful story. And um, I also believe that if you felt positive about what you were having happen to you, you know, in encounters, um, if you meditate, I think if you want to focus on it more, find out who they are, you know, explore the possibilities. Uh, you have no fear. You, you yourself, through the photos, had no fear of what you were looking at. And that that's the big right. that's the biggest thing. When you don't have any fear yeah, of something I've, like that, I've not ever been afraid of them. Um, right. I'm afraid yes. of this space, you know, that we're yeah, on. Right, this place, this earth, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think if you focus on meditation, you too can uh, ask them who they are and where they're from. And I think uh, through telepathy, you'll get an answer. And I'd like to see in the future any updates of direct visitation or contact you have with these uh, so, unknown space people okay so meditate and call them in yeah you so like, like i said with the heather uh before you want to do a christed meditation you say um right. my name is uh, my name is karen i take these pictures of your light ships i'm interested mm -hmm. to know who you are i'm a, a christed being of light and i will only connect with those of the light forces of the Christed being, I'm um, the Christed being of light. I've only connect with Christed beings of light star people that are Christed beings of light. And by putting it in that context, what you're going to do is facilitate telepathic communications. And any human being can do this if they train their mind to do it or their consciousness to do it. Um, the thing going for you. I'm going to start it tonight. Oh, you start today. Let me know what happens uh, down the road. Um, and if you need help uh, on, you know, what you're doing, just ask me here on Encounters and I'll help you out. Thank you so much, Commander. And I love the show. And I'm just excited to hear, like the last lady said, I know I'm not crazy. Right, <laughs> I never thought right. I was crazy. Other people no, did, not. but I didn't. Nobody did. <laughs> Thank you, Commander. Hey, Karen, thank you so much. So you've been a blessing and a, a, a pleasure to have on the show. And that was Karen in Oklahoma. You're watching Encounters, the number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. Uh, CNN says nothing about us. Good Morning America says nothing about our show. Uh, NBC, Fox, nobody says anything about us. The beautiful part is that we're so popular, they're afraid to say anything about us. Because if they do, they're going to just lose their minds. But you're watching Encounters here. It's uh, about 1.03 in the morning. 
And we'll stay on, I think, for maybe a few more minutes. We're going to get on our regular time at 11 o'clock tomorrow night, unless something else happens. Something weird, maybe. And uh, we want to thank Karen for being here with us. Uh, I know April is, I thought April was going to sleep and going to get some rest. Um, as you know, she's exhausted. April, if you're in there, did you want to come on here for a little bit? Uh, Chris M. Texas 1, I've never seen a UFO. Well, Chris, don't feel alone. A lot of people haven't seen sp what we call spaceships or UFOs, um, but you will. It all happens in time, Chris. Uh, you should eventually see something. And there'll be people here that can help you when you do see it, what specifically that was like. You know? Uh, we're going to bring April up. She... I know she's been going through a lot off, off planet. And I was, and I, was I, 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 I just had to do I was, it. I was, so, hey, hey, good evening, April. April. Hi, guys. I was, I was on your live, live when you were playing, playing the music, music like, like earlier tonight. tonight. Yeah. But I, but I, I, I didn't, didn't stay, stay on with you, off, but I knew you were going to go off planet when, when I was watching it. I just, I was like, she's going to go off planet. I am starting to regret doing those. Now it's like every time I do them, it's like I thought, I thought they were just coming into you know, say hi and show their support, you know, right, right. and, uh, you know, um, because I'd been like asking for, um, you know, the other families to come in more so you guys can see them, you know, cause I know you guys have been all wanting to see your families. And even though it's not possible for everybody to go up on the ships right now, it was really important for me, for you guys to experience that. Um, and so, you know, I've been, I've been asking for them to come in and, you know, I, uh, I guess I got my wish tonight. Everybody came in, but then they said, yeah, you're coming too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the, the reason, reason why I'm echoing, uh, 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 April's on the phone, phone that, that we make contact, contact with our space people, 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 people on the command. On that's the why command. the echoes here. So that's why we're echoing. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so I knew she was going off planet and, uh, she has two phones. One phone doesn't echo. This is the uh, the Ashtar Command contact phone. So this phone, while well, they're watching our show right now on the ship, they have monitors, uh, not like an Earth-based TV, you know, but they have monitors on the ship. And our space family watches every show. Uh, they watch all the shows. This phone here uh, that she's using echoes only because this is the phone where they connect with us. They can actually, if they so choose or need to, they can speak in her phone, this phone, and communicate with us through the phone. They don't always do that, but they can. Um, most likely on Friday nights, what we do is with this phone, they'll choose an Earth-based song with a message. And with this phone, they actually do that. With the other phone, when that's charged up, they don't use that phone. They use this phone primarily, the older phone. But uh, just to give like a background of why there's an echo, the only reason why there's an echo, because the, the amplification of sound on this phone, they hear it on the ship. So I'm going to turn it back to April, uh, and I'm going to, when I don't talk, I don't echo, so we'll turn it back to her. Then when I talk, you can go on the, uh, turn, turn the mic, mic off, off for a minute. minute. That's, That's back, back on, on the table. table. So um, when I got back, the ship was still outside, so <laughs> I thought it would be great to turn on the live and run out there so everybody could see the Ashtar command ship before it had left um, because it was it was a large ship and it was in plain sight so I was like yes yeah. so I ran out there to go capture it and it stayed long enough for five people to come in and then it was gone I'm just like no but right. um, but at least the first five people got to see the ship as it was leaving um, which I was really happy about but then after right after that ship left this um, big or not big it was a i don't know what kind of a ship it was but it was another ship that came through but this thing let off a chemical trail over my property that was so big ah. it was at least a mile long wow. and, and the, um and there was and then after that happened um there was all kinds of ships on top of it as as quick as you could say blue you know they they were all over the place scrambling around the top of my property 
um, and I could see them all moving. Um, and I was like, I didn't know what was happening. Like I saw this thing dropping chemtrails and, you know, but when they had brought me up, um, they were explaining to me because I, I needed to know what was happening in the woods, like why there was so much activity, what was going yeah. on, because I was a little worried about it and um, concerned because it was a lot happening. Um, and then I saw that, you know, that burnt wood and I'm like, what's going on? And then those ships that were showing up during the daytime um, over the tree line and whatever was melting over the top of the trees I got pictures of and I just posted it actually. Wow. So, um, but so I was trying to, I was asking him like what was happening. So all this activity we've been seeing the last few days in the woods was them um, placing equipment into the ground um, wow. all, ar all around the land here. Um, I think I knew they were doing something. I just didn't know what they were doing. What they're doing is they're putting a barrier up over the land here um, because they need to protect it more um, because of the, um, the the main Bigfoot beings being here because of the fairies being here and because of my family being here. And they need to know that this particular po property is protected. Um, so they were placing things into the ground. Um, and what that thing was that I saw during the daytime when I saw the ball and then it turned rainbow and then something came over was them trying to, um, they were trying to start up the, um, the protection barrier. Um, and I don't, it, you could see it like start to come over the top of the tree. It was like almost like a, a light ooze coming over the top of the tree. Um, I don't know like how that all works, but, um, that was them trying to start it up. Um, they needed to place more for connection or whatever they had to do. Um, but that's what, that's why there was so much activity and hustle and bustle in the woods. And that's, remember, I kept telling you, it looked like they were dropping something. They were dropping equipment from the spaceship into the woods. Um, but, um, after that happened, 18, I counted 18 ships surrounded the whole top of my prop, like the whole wow. thing had 18 huge ships, like circling my, my property. But, yeah, the, yeah. but the, then the ama this amazing thing happened and it was absolutely stunningly beautiful. I mean, there was more to the trip than just that and I'll get into right. that later. But, um, but what happened tonight in the sky, um, was these, um, there was four, um angelic beings floating in the sky they mm -hmm. were they were bright my camera was not picking up my camera was picking up mikey my camera was picking up everything else that was happening out there but these beings were so bright there was there shouldn't have been any reason why my camera did not pick them right, up right. and it would not pick them up they kept they were floating two of them like were faced each other and like circled each other like almost like they were dancing and then they started to slowly go um uh, behind this humongous tree that's in the middle of my my yard um and they went behind this huge tree and this tree is huge it's like yeah, yeah. your house is big it's a big tree. Mm -hmm. um and they started floating behind it and then all of a sudden there was these um lights that happened alongside of the tree and they they all went into a pyramid shape like this huge pyramid shape but then the pyramid started to roll around and it was wow. an actual pyramid ship that was rolling around <clears throat> and my camera would not pick it up and i do not know why um and these beings flew into this ship um, except for one, the first one that showed itself to me stayed there like it wanted me to see it. Mm -hmm. It wanted me to see it, Cap Commander, and I swear I felt nothing but pure love coming from this being. Like, it, it was arms was out, its legs were straight down, it was um, glowing this brilliant gold, and mm -hmm. then its wings were flapping like slightly behind it. And it was like, it was right there. It was like, it was really high up, but I could definitely see it. And I felt all this love coming from this being. And it wanted everybody to know it was there. It knew I was filming it. It stayed there, but it would right. not let me pick it up on camera. And I don't know why. I was only able to describe what I was seeing. Um, but it wanted, it, it like wanted everybody to feel the love coming from it. That's what it wanted. That's what it was showing me or telling me. I don't know how yeah. I know this, but that's what, it, that's what I know, you know, and it, no, it no, wanted I, I, everybody to think, feel that. As you, as you narrate, as you narrate, as you narrate the story, story that's, that's good, good enough, enough because, because whatever reason, reason, it's no, it's big, no big deal. deal. 
there'll be other nights when there'll, there'll be, be something on, on the camera. camera. But just, just your ability, your ability to, come to come back to Earth, Earth and, and share your story. story. This, this is now, what, the 18th time you've been taking on the ship? 19 now, yes. 19. 19. 19. I was, I was one, one off. off. <laughs> so, every, every, every journey, journey Craig, Craig, on, on the ship, ship is like, like a different, different chapter. chapter. Every, every chapter, chapter has, has a different, different story. story. And, 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 and this, this chapter, chapter has another, another story, story, another, another message. message. So, so uh, what, uh, what we're, we're getting, getting here is, is uh, information, uh, information from, from our space, space family, family. Um, my, my mother, mother father on the ship, ship. her mother, her mother father, father, father and family, family on the ship. ship. Oh, the echoing? Oh, the echoing? echoing? Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry, let, so, me, um, let, me, let me mute my thing. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so I was going to say, what she's getting, even though people couldn't see all the stuff that was going on in camera earlier that I was watching, is that... Um, they are here. She's documenting for the 19th time now since last year. She has been on the ship 19 times. This is natural command. Her family's on the ship. Kit Kat's family's on the ship. My family's on the ship. Johnny's family's on the ship. Chezo's family's on the ship. Uh, and we're all, we're all in the Northeast. Uh, and um, eventually we'll be joining April on these journeys on the ship. We don't know when that's gonna be. They don't tell us anything yet about that. That means our space family, I mean. They don't tell us anything like that. That We just have to be patient, especially me. And uh, I understand that. But the reason why I have become, and April knows why I've become impatient, because I know I wanna help the planet even more so than I'm, than I'm doing now. I know I'm helping the planet the way I'm doing this show now, this talk show. But I know there's so much more that we all want to do, right? There's so much more that we all want to to do for the transformation of the planet. But we do what we can do, right? And um, that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful part. part of it. He, Commander, he said you were doing exact. Hold on, hold, give me one second. I gotta get this dog. Go on, hurry up. And, and I know I they, they can hear me on the ship, ship right, right now through this, through this, through this phone. phone. My, my father's father can hear me right now on the ship. ship. And uh, sometimes, sometimes I wonder, I wonder if, if I was even, even if I was doing it up. Sorry about so that. Um, so my um, one thing that one thing that he said is your dad said you were doing exactly what you were supposed to be doing right now. That's what he mm -hmm. told me to tell you. You know, he wanted you to work on your patience, and but he said that you were doing exactly what you were supposed to be doing right now. That's what he told me. Oh, good. Oh, good. I mean, I, I, I believe, believe that. that. And he and knows I was impatient for the for sense, sense of wanting, wanting to do more. more. But, but I, guess, I guess, you know, you know everything, everything will happen in time. time. But do you or, not or understand what time. you were doing right now? Do you not understand how much you were helping people? Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah, think, yeah, that, I think, I think I, that you, you were so that. humble and so not full of yourself. You don't even know how much you do for people, you know, even from even for me, because I have a really hard time centering myself after all this happens. But um, between you and Johnny and Kit Kat, you guys are my center to, to the storm that's happening around me. Mm -hmm. you know, this is a, it's a lot to deal with. And, you know, um, you, I think that's why we were chosen as a, as a team the way we are, you know, because mm -hmm. each one of us brings something, each one of us brings something special to the table, you know, and, you know, you don't give yourself enough credit as to how much that you are helping people, how much you are waking people up, you are doing what you were meant to do. You know, you don't you don't see that in yourself enough. You really truly maybe maybe, maybe maybe because I'm too humble. humble. I don't, you know, you know. Uh, but I do but understand. I do understand. I mean, I really I do understand, do understand that, that I'm that here to bust, here to bust the the You are. You are. I, I, I am actually bust 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 the and then you, <laughs> But you're helping people wake up, and you're helping people to not be afraid, and you're help. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you help so many people. Like you don't ever see that in yourself, and I see it in you. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I love guess. you. You're my brother, but I see how much good you do with all these people that you help, and you don't ever see that in yourself. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I, don't. I don't. 
But I mean, but I, I understand, understand. I understand, I understand that. that uh, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the echo Let me do this here. Oh, so just to respond, um, because I am very humble in what I do, folks, I don't always see that I'm doing enough or think I'm doing enough. But to know that uh, my space family uh, who watches my show says I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now and all the media I've done for years 21 years on radio um, and doing the things I do uh, you know I can completely get it that what I'm doing is really my mission work right now is to wake people up is to interview people is to you know let people know that you know don't believe what you see on on the major cable channels and all this other stuff or websites, you know, and I'm teaching people to connect with themselves instead of connecting with somebody channeling a space being or an ET, connect with yourself, connect with the inner self, the spiritual self, you know, and that's how you're going to connect to your star family, not through some documentary on history channel or through discovery. It's going to be all within you. And that's really, the most important thing, you know, that we can do. I think. Anyway. So, so yeah. yeah. It, def it definitely is, and I, I just, I was just so sad, and I wish that you, you four could have been out there with me tonight and seen, seen this, these beings because they were so spectacular. Like I, you know, I, I see the space beings, like all the good space beings when I go on the ship and they are all beautiful in their own rights but what happened tonight up in that sky with these angel beings being up there um it was just it was stunning and then the this pyramid ship that was spinning around on the side of it it was huge it, it I've never I mean I have only seen photos of ships like this um mm -hmm. and it, they were very translucent and you couldn't really see them well but the ship was uh, just up front and present and it was mm -hmm. huge and these beings were flying into this pyramid ship um wow. and i have not seen one like that out here before i've seen all the orb ones and the star ones and but this one was just immense and it was an and it, my camera would not pick it up and it was so wow. frustrating it was like literally probably i i don't know about a hundred feet from my house and I couldn't pick it up, and it was well, there, there, there was a lot of glitching on, on TikTok, TikTok tonight. Tonight. So, so yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was weird. weird. But tonight of all nights for it to be happening, it was so frustrating. Tonight yeah. of yeah. all nights for that to happen. I mean, I these these beings were up front and present and just glowing, just glowing, and I was so sad that you guys couldn't see them. Um, so you know what? You know what? The the news news is all that don't happen again. again. I hope so. It will. It will. It's good. It, it definitely, definitely will. will. Oh, sorry. Did they, Did have, they have like, like um, a, message a message for in general, general that people know, know about? about? Just the just the love that I mean, they were they were admitting like this love vibe from them. It's like it was like a um, a frequency that was going through me. And it was like I was meant to share that with every single person that was there with mm -hmm. me, which was everybody that was on the phone, you know, on the on the live with me. And they and it's like they wanted they wanted them to know how much that they're loved and how much these beings love everybody here on the planet. And they're and they're here and they've been here and they've been looking out for us this whole time. And they don't want people to forget that. That they don't have to be afraid but this the, the vibration that was going through my whole body was yeah, just yeah. it was crazy i've never felt any anything like that before that was it, it was an immense feeling i almost had well, felt like i needed to sit down and it's, and a, it's beautiful a beautiful thing, thing that they, that they were able to, to have, have that happen so, so you know, know you're, you're actually, actually I have, I have to meditate, to meditate on this, but, but this, oh, this show, by the way, is going to be on my YouTube channel. channel. That's, 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 that's,
If you go to YouTube, you can watch that channel where all our accounts are on. This will be downloaded by tomorrow on our YouTube channel. But uh, I have the feeling uh, that April will be, again, sometime this week. And whenever I say this stuff, it's just like, if there's something important going on, I do feel that there's something important. One of the good things is that our Ashtar Command took care of the reptilians that April talked about. You know, they're going to try to infiltrate us, not just April, but all of us. uh, And they won't be able to do it. And the reason why. The Ashtar Command are very, very advanced spiritual beings of light, number one. The reptilians are scared, and that's why they're trying to do all these crazy, not-so-good things to people uh, and the positive space people on Earth. They're not going to be able to do it because we have many, many ships that will stop them. And uh, I believe these beings that tried to do what they did over the property over the, in the air um were they actually captured yet april do you know they were they were in hot pursuit of them as um because because um there was uh what four ships that flew out of the woods after them um and they were in hot pursuit of these this next batch that came through because i mean that that thing that they were trying to trail that they were trying to drop directly i mean they were directly over my property and it was like a mile long it was huge yeah, yeah long long one and wow. uh, and it was like directly over my house like where my family lives and um and i'll tell you um it wasn't just the ships that came to the defense um the ferries were completely lined up around my property arm in arm circling my property and that was did, the did other you? thing too that i didn't talk about um i think i got if i think i got a couple of shots of them like lined up along the fence and everything they mm-hmm. were all around my property like a, from the gra- all the way around the grass they were like lined up lined up and there was uh, some standing on top of my roof and um they were everywhere just everywhere out there and they were kept well, trying well, to push me to go inside you know, you, know, you, you can take, take what you download, download you take a, a, a video, video from that recording, recording from live. Live. You, you, you have that, that for the first five minutes. minutes. You, you, you clip, clip, it. clip, clip that, that clipping. clipping. Oh, and, 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 and save it. What about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I got it. I'm going to have to go back. Yeah, you probably, probably do. do. Yeah, I, I didn't I think think I was I was so exhausted. I just wanted to get in the house and get in the water because that's the only thing that feels like it calms it down. Like when I fill off kilter is the salt water. Coming coming back it's just it's, yeah. it's, i feel like i'm wobbly a little bit because it's it's weird it's like the atmosphere is different than being here from being on the ship so when you're gone when i'm well not you but when i'm gone for like a couple of days or anything yeah. more than a few days i feel like really weird when i'm back on planet because it, it, it just feels different and and red red so, so uh, well, it's coming up to near one thirty. Uh, we're going to definitely be on tomorrow night, for sure, at 11. I don't suspect, I don't predict anything happening to April being taken back an Ashtar command ship tomorrow night. Unless she starts playing dance music or some, you know, some songs or something, and they start dancing and say, okay. We're done dancing. It's time to go on the ship. We'll dance when we get there. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think, you know, they, they, they give you, they'll if they need to have you on the ship, they'll give you a break. And probably, I would say, the next time she goes on the ship will be probably towards the end, uh, towards the middle of the week, maybe, before the end of the week. And please note that May 25th, on Memorial Day weekend, we are going to have our Ashtar Command gathering in the apple field. I don't plan on eating any apples because the apples won't be ready to pick or eat. Uh, but I will definitely be in the apple orchard field, our special location. And uh, I hope, uh, I hope uh, you know, my prayers are that uh, people help April get down here. Uh, we'll make sure she can get down here gas-wise and get back up to Vermont gas-wise. Uh, and also, um, 
the year. So uh, it's real important uh, that we're all together, Kit Kat, myself, Johnny, Chesno, and April in the field. That we're supposed to all be in there together. And uh, I know that to be the truth. So I'm hoping I give my prayers that her um, leg heals up um so that she can take the journey and be here it's uh we're supposed to do this thing and um and some miracle i think something will be able to help make it happen um but she's been going through the physical healing that she's had to go through with this thing and uh you know it's not easy but we definitely put prayers and light and love and energy to that leg and say heal 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 and uh, so she can actually be able to make the trip, you know, where she is up near the Canadian border. Just to let people know that's a big deal, the 25th. And it's going to be a lot warmer out, too, which is also a blessing. We're not going to be freezing in the cold up in the uh, apple orchard field. You know? I know my daughter really wants to go. Um, she's really excited about it, but um, I can't wait to meet your daughter. It's just a whole finance thing right now, Commander. You know, it's yeah, well, yeah. been real, it's been a real struggle. Um, no, but, uh, and then, then the leg on top of everything. I don't know if I can have it down for that long in a car, um, but yeah, yeah. we'll see. Well, you know, you can always take a break. break. If you, you come, come down, down you're, you're getting, getting some, some Italian, Italian pizza. pizza. <laughs> He's trying to grab the fat girl with food. You hear this, guys? <laughs> and that's the time you your daughter. You and your daughter. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm secretly an Italian. Italian. I can be Italian. Italian. I can be whatever I want. Why aren't you getting any hats? Why isn't the commander getting any hats? He needs if to be Italian. Italian. He'll be an Italian Tahari. Uh, <laughs> an Italian Tahari. But I, I do I know, know that, that uh, people in the world are supposed to be here. Right? Uh, I, get I get messages, messages too, too, and they say, man, they're, they're supposed, supposed to be here. Okay. okay. You know, you know um, just, just take, take breaks. breaks. You're driving down, down take, take breaks. breaks. Take it easy. easy. Rest, Rest stops. stops. Whatever. whatever. And, uh, and uh, you know, yeah. it'll all be good. And the weather's going to be perfect. That's a beautiful one. The weather. For April and daughter coming down here that Memorial Day weekend, I think we're going to have really good weather. Warm temperatures, Italian pizza. I'll, I, I give you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> hey, UFO God, good to see you. That's a good name, UFO God. You know, UFO Goddess. <laughs> Thank you, River Blue, for the hat. I like the name River, UFO Goddess. We're going to follow you. That's a great name, a good name. And that we're now friends with UFO Goddess. Whoever knew there was a name called UFO Goddess? But there is. Make sure, April, that you and your daughter bring comfortable things to sit in the field, especially for your leg. And um, possibly bring some Tahar with you. Bring a little bit of tahar, maybe a peel, a, peel, a pearl, a pearl and a tahar. If you get some pearls, you can put them in the pizza. Pearls in the pizza, that rhymes actually. Uh, Casey says, says Hannah, Hannah, can, you, you, can, can I, I PS? I actually kind of half, kind of half expected to see the pearls in the woods when I went in there. <laughs> I kept looking. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You were looking. I did. I looked because I I was asking. I was joking, but not joking. And I was asking right, right. if they could leave some for us. I, I said I wanted to bring some for the commander. <laughs> and I was you know what? I, I bet, bet you, you before you come down, down here with your daughter, daughter they're, they're going to surprise, surprise you with like two pearls. pearls. Tell them, I know they're listening to the show. show. I want to know the robot to know that I need two pearls to grow in my I was out stepping new and putting my light door together. And we're almost, almost done. done. I'm ready, ready to plant seeds. seeds. So, so seeds. So, so I need some, I need pearls, some pearls so I can so plant, I can the, plant seeds the seeds in the garden where they grow. I want to have the smallest watermelon in the world. world. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's getting kind of late, folks. It is 1.33 a.m. in the morning. Uh, April, I'm glad you're back on planet. Um, 
and uh, we'll be on tomorrow night at 11. Our big weekend's coming up, so um, take your time with your daughter. Your daughter ha is able to drive, I guess, and um, just take breaks. You know, have her take breaks. When you get to the hotel that you originally had, uh, let us know, and uh, we'll have a meetup point, and you'll get to meet Greg and Elaine, my friends, who are also contactees. He's had contacts in his house with uh, Blue Bean Space People and a uh, very, very beautiful couple. And uh, so it'll be good. And then uh, I can get my that object or whatever that my father wants me to have. I can learn how to use it once I get it, you know? Like I said, Commander, I'll try. I'll, I'll try I know you will. You know. So at least so you got a daughter, daughter that can drive. drive. So you don't, so you have, don't to have to do so much with your life, life, you know? It's not the deal. It's the deal. It's the deal. It's the deal. All right. All right, I'm going to go because I am exhausted. I love you. I know you guys. I know you guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Absolutely. Take care of the rest. And don't think on the ship right now because you just got off the ship. Let her get to sleep. Good night, everybody. Take care. Take care. We'll see you. We'll see you. Let me just do this, this here. Year. And uh, this should probably end the show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be on tomorrow night at our normal time, 11 p.m. Uh, everybody have a great night, a great morning. Don't work too hard Monday. Let's get over Monday night or Monday into two. This week's going to be a warm week in the Northeast. And I will be out there finishing my light garden. I might go live one morning and show you what I'm doing. I'll show it to you actually when I'm completed with it. I'll show you where the commander is growing watermelons because I'm growing organic heirloom watermelons, grapes, strawberries, and I'm adding blueberry plants to my micro farming. Absolutely. All right, buddy. I love you all. I really need to get some sleep and go off planet. We'll catch you on another edition of Encounters tomorrow night. Thanks for the gifts. Thanks for the support. We appreciate all of you. We love you all. Take care. Let me see here. What's going on?